project is called Rockprint. <clears throat> so I think what remote material deposition already had is uh, an aspect of sustainability. So we built it with clay. We afterwards took away the clay. We let it dry. Afterwards, we demolished it. And an artist, this was at the Sittewerk St. Gallen, an art uh, um, institution, uh, afterwards reprocessed the clay and continued working with it. And I think that's something which we are we were always interested in, but we, it shifts more and more with the general discussion which we have since, since a, a lot of the time in, in the foreground, the kind of sustainability aspects also of these processes. And since, since let's say, the robot phase, we started to get, get from subtractive processes into additive processes, we are inherently sustainable. So we put material where we want it, that's where we fix it. But now we thought, well, how if we could actually take that material back again in an original state? And this project, Rockprint, is about this. Our source material is bulk rock gravel, material that you find everywhere in the world. Different conditions, different sizes, different stones, etc. But you have it everywhere, it's abundant. It's cheap, right? So the question was, could we take this material and bring it into form in a way where it has a moment of stability? In particular, it reaches stability when force, when it's under force. So when you, we thought, we think conceptually of a building that's, let's say, when you put a floor plate on it, because that's where most of the mass in building is, then it's stabilized. And if you build back this building, you take away the floor plate, it actually destabilizes again, and you have just have the raw material back. This was the, our conceptual outset. And we knew that there are principles called jamming, where this happens. Jamming is a moment, I think I can show it here, where some, somehow, one particle cannot move away because some, some other particle is in its way. And because they're all in one another's way, they can't, they can't move. So like this, for example, this column of cornflakes is standing. If, you, if, if this tube is pulled up a little bit more, then at one point it will collapse. So that's a moment of jamming. Material can't move locally, and therefore globally something uh, becomes or has a moment of stability. That's what we wanted to use. Now, at architecture scale, it's not so easy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> just gravel alone won't do it. So, what we did is we started to add string. And this project, Rockprint, is an art installation which we did for the Chicago Architecture Biennale, um, where we have a robot deposit string in a pattern which comes out of, of a lot, a large series of experiments to figure out how, what the exact size, etc., is in proportion to the gravel. And this robot uh, deposits this pattern and afterwards a layer of gravel is put on this pattern. What we see here. Then another layer of string is put on there, exactly at the same location, and these become four legs of this piece. And all of that is built up in a box up to the height of four meter. And where string and gravel meet, a condition is created where the gravel can't move. Or where after certain movement, the gravel cup doesn't move anymore. The string holds it back and vice versa, they get entangled and captured. So after building up this, this um, four meter high block of gravel, we take off the formwork. The gravel stays on quite well because this is a lightweight uh, aggregate which we needed to choose because the floor load was limited, so we could only put, I think it was a ton uh, of weight. And then you can unearth 
the sculpture inside. This sculpture was conceived that we have a lot of weight on top, and this weight is actually creating the stability in the legs. If you imagine the sculpture the other way around, these legs standing in the free would be very unstable because they don't have a lot of force. That's exactly the diagram which I showed you in the top. And it creates this very intricate surface. And the people that were coming into this exhibition, they, no one did believe that it was just loose rocks. And then I always went up there because I could. The other were, others were, were all pushed back and touched it, you know, and rocks started falling off, you know. And then people immediately back, back <coughs> immediately back, back off because they realized that they're standing in, in front of four meter of loose gravel piled vertically. And, you know, again, like in the remote material deposition, you have these intricate moments, quite delicate moments of, of material formation, which just come from that process. And the conceptual and performative, maybe the most uh, interesting moment was, of course, the build back, uh, which we did for basically for the finissage. And here is a video of it. So Petrus, that's a researcher that's working on, on the project, um, actually started to pull out the string of the mass again. So he has a spool, and the more the string comes on the spool, the faster it gets, of course. <laughs> and so he pulls out all the string again, and you start to get this pile of, of this gravel, he needs to protect himself a little bit <laughs> because it's literally raining, <coughs> raining gravel. Um, and thanks to a colleague who had a high-speed camera, we could uh, capture those uh, images. So that's how we basically decompose uh, an art piece. Um, but we think of it as a potential building. Uh, back into its original materials, namely uh, gravel and string. And we hope that maybe in one or two years we'll be able to, to build the first small, at least, demonstration that this could also be a building into which you can walk and you know it's, it's made of physical uh, or vertically put gravel. We hope we can achieve this. We actually just did a load test on a sample and we couldn't break it. Um, but let's see, more to come. Just want to show you the final state. So again, pile of gravel and a spool of string. Good.